we're waiting on the last set, he says. That's fine. I think he's trying to kill me. Morning. Another day, another rare world test. Today, we're doing it on the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 and the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. We'll kind of test both of these devices out, talk about some of the differences even, all while we explore as per the usual. But first things first. Okay, so now we have two models of the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5. We have the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 and the Watch 5 Pro. Now last year, instead of the Pro, we had the Classic, which was essentially the same thing as the Watch 5, but it had a physical rotating bezel instead of the digital one that we have now. That apparently is done. You can actually still buy it on Samsung's site, but it's the Watch 4 Classic, and that tells me, well, they're not making a new one. Now I know there'll be plenty of people out there that are going to miss the physical rotating bezel. I also really liked it, but I found myself kind of always gravitating towards the more minimalistic, smaller, lighter Watch 4 instead of the Watch 4 Classic. I found that that virtual rotating bezel kind of worked well enough anyway, and that is here on all of these Watch 5 models, so bye. Now the Watch 5 is very similar looking to the Watch 4. You'd actually have a hard time telling the difference even with them side by side. And they come in basically the same colors. One of them has a different name, but it's very similar. Samsung did, however, change the glass on the top from Gorilla Glass to Sapphire, which is a welcome change as it'll scratch a lot less easily. We also have a larger battery, but about 12 to 14%. The smaller one has a 14% larger one. The larger one is a 12% one. And we now have a supposedly improved set of sensors. The sensors and that battery will test out soon enough. Now the Watch 5 Pro actually has the largest battery of all of the models by a decent chunk. It's 30% or so larger than the already larger Watch 5 battery. We also supposedly have better GPS tracking and a titanium case to go with the sapphire glass instead of the aluminum one on the regular Watch 5. So the case should not scratch as much when banged around a bit. Now both these new watches take 20 millimeter quick release bands, just like the Watch 4 did. And as with the last watch, I got the largest size for the Watch 5 and think it's perfect in spite of my, you know, daintier wrists. I will say though that the band that the larger one comes with when you get the smaller size just fits on my wrist. I'm on the second to last, sometimes the last notch on it. So just something for you to know. You might need a different band when the watch arrives. Now they both come in Wi-Fi only models and LTE models are available for $50 more. And lastly, there are some golf themed versions of each model that have a green home button and some custom straps that all apparently help you track some golf stuff. They do also apparently come with a limited membership to the Smart Caddy app. And as far as I can tell, they don't actually do anything specific for golf other than that membership. Like it would be more interesting to me if they tracked your golf swing because they're on your wrist and somehow they figured out a way to have an algorithm help you do that and improve that or whatever. But they don't. Let's get out of here so I'm not late for my appointment and let's test out some of the fitness stuff with the watch. Okay, and now we're at my local gym called Grindhouse. And I'm here with Vince here, uh, who's my trainer's been working with me for a bit. He's a nice guy, but I really think he enjoys watching me in pain. At least he's honest. <laughs> so first, I loved Samsung's new body composition feature that they introduced with the Watch 4 that lets you scan yourself using the watch to get a body fat and a muscle mass estimate. The idea here is that it's better than just measuring your weight. As someone with 10% body fat versus 30, even at a similar weight, will look very differently and be different levels of healthy even. It's a metric I always like to have when working out as it tells you more than just your weight and can help you adjust your diet or workout accordingly for your goal. So first, let's get a baseline from this body scan machine in my gym, which is a $6,000 machine that measures exactly that and see how close we get. Now the number itself doesn't exactly matter unless you're gonna perform in some sort of body weight competition. What really matters is that you just want it to be consistent so that this way you can see if you're going up or down and then adjust according to your goals, like I said. Okay, and now let's get into our actual workout and track it on the watch. So I selected weightlifting on this watch as a catch-all since I didn't really want to stop and choose each workout separately, but it does have a decent amount of choices if that's how you prefer to do it. 
but it did track my heart rate the entire time and calculated my calorie burn accordingly. And it gives you all the data you can expect from a smartwatch. Thank you for hurting me. Enjoy. <laughs> okay, now let's test how it tracks cardio using one of the cycling machines here in the gym. All right, so after a quick 10 minutes on the stationary bike, the watch got very close heart rate wise to the handle based tracker of the exercise bike. So that's pretty impressive. It also gives you data on what heart rate zones you were in and when, and now gives you the heart rate recovery information to see how quickly your body recovered from the workout, which is nice to know. Okay, ready. Now let's head to a park nearby my house so we can test out some of the outdoor workout tracking stuff. And let's take a bike on the way there because I want to test something else now. Real quick though, before we head out while we're talking about fitness, I've been trying to cook more at home, but I just never feel like I have the time. And so that's why sometimes I use today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers meals with easy to follow recipes to your door. You select what your goals are. I chose fit and wholesome to help me not negate all those workouts I'm doing. And then you choose from 30 plus weekly recipes that you can also even customize further if you want. Don't want chicken? Swap it for fish. Don't like the sides? Change those too. I started using HelloFresh and honestly, well before they asked to sponsor a video because I wanted to force myself to get better at cooking, frankly, in addition to the health benefits and budget benefits of not eating out every meal. And the only way to do that is to practice. HelloFresh makes it easy with everything mise en place already for me, which is the term for having all of your ingredients measured and ready to go before cooking, which saves me time, but also means less wasted food. Now I live alone and I travel a ton, as you guys might know, so I like that the plans are flexible. And even when the meal is served for two, I either invite someone over for dinner, or as soon as I'm done cooking, the second serving goes into a Tupperware for lunch or dinner the next day. So if you're interested in saving money on food, eating healthier, or just wanting to challenge yourself to cook more often like me, go to HelloFresh.com and use code UNLOCKER65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Thanks to HelloFresh again for sponsoring this video. And the thing I wanna test is, well, the cycle tracking. Now, I was a little disappointed that the Galaxy Watch 4 lost the ability to auto track cycling, whereas the Watch 3 had it. And well, that's missing here on the Watch 5 as well. It'll do auto tracking of walking and running. It just won't do biking for whatever reason. I don't understand it, but Samsung just won't do it. Now, for walking and running, essentially, if you do something for 10 minutes like that, it'll eventually notify you and go, hey, I think you're doing this, you're walking. Would you like to track? And you say yes, and then it will track the workout. It'll even track retroactively the last 10 minutes, and then that's that. For biking, though, we've got to tell the watch that we're going to do it. And also, you may notice I'm an idiot with two watches on. I want to see how the Pro does versus the non-Pro with this. I'll explain why in a bit. Welcome to McCarran Park. Originally built in 1903, it was called Williamsburg Park, which is the name of the neighborhood that I live in, but it's just south of the park, basically. And then in 1906, it was renamed to Greenpoint Park, which is the neighborhood just north of here, where actually my office is. And finally, in 1909, it was named McCarran Park after Patrick Henry McCarran, who was a politician at the time. And it definitely feels like they changed the name because they didn't want the two neighborhoods to fight over the park. Probably smart. All right, now I wore both of these watches on that cycle and I'm still doing it now because I was curious if there's any difference between the GPS on both devices. Does not seem to be, at least in this, albeit not terribly difficult setting. They did basically the same. The routes are identical. I tried to do some loops and I stopped at one point just to see what they would do and they both frankly, did a good job. That is the route that I took. And the reason I wanted that is because all of the features on these two watches are basically the same across the board. The Pro just has one feature for the most part that the non-Pro doesn't. And that's a route feature. Now this feature lets you follow a route using GPS data by installing a GPX file, which is a GPS exchange format file. Basically this data is collected from a GPS source, turned it to this GPX file. When you load it on the watch, it'll then literally give you a route to the like GPS coordinates that you can then follow. It's usually used a lot for like hiking trails, for example. So you can actually either create your own route by selecting a workout that tracks routes like walking or outdoor cycling, for example, and then do the route. And when you're done, you'll actually be able to go in 
to the Samsung Health app, tap on that route and download or export the GPX data. Now, the other way you can do it is if you can go to popular apps for hiking or, or even websites, and sometimes they have GPX data that you can download. There's a couple of popular apps that do this, but they require a subscription fee in order to get that type of data, but that's another way to go about it. But once you have this data, the watch can then import it from the wearable app, and then the watch itself will actually guide you along that trail and the different markers for the GPX file. The thing I don't understand, maybe somebody can tell me, why this feature works only on the Pro and not on the regular Watch 5. Okay, now we have to talk about Wear OS 3, which is the operating system on these watches. Now, originally launched with the Watch 4 and is a collaboration between Google and Samsung, but Samsung clearly had some type of exclusivity because we haven't really seen another Wear OS 3 watch yet until Mont Blanc recently just launched one. And so now having seen that and got to play with it for a little bit, we have a better understanding of what Wear OS 3 kind of really is. And it's important when you're looking to buy a new Wear OS 3 watch. Now, long story short, Wear OS is a little more similar to how Android works in a way. It's basically the underlying operating system and it has all the APIs for all of the sensors that are in these watches. And then manufacturers are kind of responsible for making their own UI on top. And in addition to that, it seems, they're also responsible for making their own apps that tap into their specific watches for all of that fitness data and everything else. Now, on one hand, this actually makes a lot of sense. It means that unlike before with Wear OS, you had the, basically the exact same operating system across all of the watches. There wasn't really a differentiator. There wasn't really a reason to buy Samsung's over Mont Blanc's or Google's over whoever. They all just kind of did the exact same things. Now though, the entire UI of the watch, the look and feel, is going to be very different between manufacturers. Also, the algorithms that they use to grab the information from the sensors that Google has given them the API for, and then use that to translate it into actual fitness data and what it means, is going to be different. And now because of all this extra work that a manufacturer has to do, it's kind of also going to limit who makes Wear OS watches, right? It's only going to be certain people that have enough resources to do so. And because it is an underlying same operating system, again, like Android, you have a Play Store on it, so developers who are making third-party apps only need to make it once, and it'll work on all of the manufacturers. Now, I've been asked many times, whenever it comes to Wear OS 3 Samsung watches, what features will only work on a Samsung phone paired with it versus any other phone? And the truth is, there's only really one, and that is the EKG feature. Now, I remember back in the day, the EKG feature actually was delayed on the watches, and that was something to do with the FDA still needing to approve it. But what it seems like to me is that FDA approval is based on the watch paired with specific phones maybe. And so that's why that feature only works when it's paired with the Samsung phone, because that's what they have the approval for, that system together. And we're using it on any other Android phone. They don't have that, so they just don't allow the feature to work. But other than that, everything else will work on a non-Samsung phone. But as we mentioned, you will need to use Samsung's app because that's kind of just how Wear OS is working. So use Samsung Health on your Android phone paired with a Samsung watch and you're basically good to go again, minus EKG. Now, if you want to, you can use Google Fit, but it just, it doesn't know what to do with most of the data coming out of the watch. It'll give you steps and heart rate and track some workouts, but sleep tracking, SpO2, like all, all of the other features that aren't just like the basic core don't really work. And I kind of wonder if we'll actually see an updated version of Google Fit when the new Pixel Watch comes out. Okay, back at home. And the last things I want to talk about are sleep tracking and the battery. Now, firstly, sleep tracking works well. It's accurate, is getting it right when I go to sleep, whenever I wake up, and it's very good at telling me that I'm terrible at sleeping. But one of the things I like about it is that you don't have to actually tell it to track your sleep. If you're wearing it and you go to sleep, boom, tracked. And now Samsung has added some improvements to the sleep tracking. It is going to probably also be available on the Watch 4 as it is here on the Watch 5, so like don't let this be a factor in making a decision. But I think it's interesting to at least address. Now, once you have a week's worth of sleep data, you can actually select sleep coaching and it'll use the data to assign a cute animal that represents the type of sleeper that you are. I'm apparently a sensitive hedgehog. I'll try not to read into that too much. But basically, it tells me that I'm more active at night and wake up later and my sleep is sensitive to my stress, all of which checks out. Now, after you get that, you'll be able to start a custom four to five week program that will try and help you get better at sleeping, something that Maybe one of these days I'll actually commit to and see what it does. Okay, now because of the fact that I do like sleep tracking, I tend to wear my smartwatches all day and then all night while I'm sleeping. The only time that I charge them is when I'm taking 
a shower. And I'm thankful actually that we have faster charging on the Watch 5 than we did on the Watch 4. You're supposed to get about 45% back in 30 minutes. Honestly, all I care about is in the 30 minutes, like I'm taking a shower and then I get ready, I get enough power back to then last me another full day. And so for a day like today with a workout in it that I tracked, plus sleep tracking overnight, I lost 45% in 24 hours. Charging it on its included charger for 30 minutes while in the shower and getting ready, got that back up to 38%. So not quite an extra 24 hours from 30 minutes like I ultimately wanna see one day, but if you left it on for a bit longer, you'd get it. And so that feels better than the Galaxy Watch 4 by a bit to me. In fact, I recently went on a work trip and I forgot to bring the charger for the watch, but I ended up getting four days just about out of it regardless. Now, to be clear, I probably worked out one of those four days. It wasn't a workout every day, so I was bad at working out that week, but still, that's pretty good. And for the Watch Pro 5 with its larger battery, I tended to get maybe an extra day out of that watch compared to this one. If you want a slightly more rugged watch because of that titanium case, which will scratch less than the aluminum one, a decent chunk more battery, and or you just like the look of the larger watch, which is totally fair, then the Pro might not be a bad option. Now, either way, both of them are probably up there for some of the best smartwatches you can get for Android phones. But I'm excited to see what other Wear OS 3 manufacturers come up with. I think we're all very curious to see what Google's own Pixel Watch will do with this. If you wanna see my video on that when it comes out, please subscribe and ding the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when it goes live. Or subscribe and ding the bell if you like this video a lot. Come explore more places with me while we test out more tech. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.